a baby Laysan albatross. It's a seabird, it's a chick that never made it to adulthood because his parents fed him plastic instead of food. This picture was taken on Midway Atoll by Chris Jordan, a TED speaker and a famous visual artist that I'm honored to collaborate with. This island is very small. It's about two miles long and it's dead in the middle, right in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. One of the biggest expanses of open water in the world. It's surrounded by thousands of miles of open water in every direction. This picture was taken in one of the most remote islands in our planet. This island should be clean, should be pristine, and the entire place is covered with plastic. And there's thousands of birds like this. And this picture hasn't been altered. This is what you see. What is happening? These seabirds, the albatross, they all come to nest once a year in Midway. They lay their eggs, the chick comes out, they go out foraging for food. They look for squid and fish. They've been doing this for millions of years. Now, what they're bringing inside of their stomachs and feeding, regurgitating to their chicks is toothbrushes, cigarette lighters, and all kinds of disposable plastic junk. A lot of bottle caps, as you can see. So then, a lot of them die, and you can take a picture as they rot of what is inside of them. This picture, when I look at this picture, I see myself. It's like looking into a mirror in many ways. It's like all of us. In many ways, some of them are really literal. Like, if I was to do a blood test of all of you here, including myself, we'll find plastic inside of our bloodstream. Well, not plastic, literally, but toxic chemicals, endocrine disruptors that are associated with plastic. What's happening? Well, plastic lasts hundreds of years in the environment. We use it for disposable objects that we only need for a few minutes, for a few seconds, for a few hours, days. Lasts hundreds of years in the environment, breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces. These pieces are going up the food chain. Science just discovered this. It hasn't really been studied what it's doing to us. Fish are eating it. We are eating it. But also plastic leaches toxic chemicals, or may leach toxic chemicals, certain types of plastic, into our food and drink. So that's us, all of us here. But if we went to the hospital right now and did a blood test of the newborn babies today, it will be the same. About well, 90% of newborn babies are pre-polluted. Pregnant women, the same thing in the amniotic liquid. That's us, very literally. So this is what we do. This is no judgment. This is a fact. This is the kind of stuff that we do as a society. We create certain problems. We are unable to deal with them, these global issues. And that is my passion. My passion is to look into uh, this singular inability of our society to take care of the big problems that we create, global warming, and many other things. So I focus on emerging and future environmental issues. Because what we see today is just like the first raindrops. When it's going to start raining, and what is coming in the future, it doesn't look good. Plastic pollution is just emerging. But there'll be nanotechnology pollution, there'll be a ocean acidification, hypoxia, there's a lot of things coming at us. So that's my passion. And my work, my work is I advise, start, help, um, Early stage startups, startup companies, startup nonprofits, hybrids, and everything in between. And I do this in Northern California, which is um, kind of a hotbed, a hotspot for innovation and entrepreneurship. So that gives me quite a, an interesting view of what's happening. It allows me to see this collective inability to solve our problems, our need to come up with a different system, and at the same time see the different attempts, well-intended attempts, that a lot of people do. So I want to share that experience with you and what I've been learning or unlearning. This picture tells a story of amazing complexity and interconnectedness of all our systems. Things, decisions that we take today in Madrid may affect birds in Midway, Antarctica. We're really amazingly interconnected. It's so complex. Science cannot even scratch at the surface of the complexity of our systems, like how the ocean works, 
or how biodiversity works in the planet, or how our climate works. So in this context, we are supposed to be making the right decisions, taking into account all this complexity. Of course, it's not working. We are in a system built to grow. If it doesn't grow, it collapses. We need to move away from it, but we don't know how to do it. And not knowing, that is an essential piece of information that I want to share with you. We need one of the most important skills that I look for in people and in myself every day is the ability to not know. We need to develop this ability, which is contrary to our culture, the ability to stay in the uncertainty as we move through big changes. Because the moment we don't stay in uncertainty, we start moving, looking for solutions. And maybe we need to redefine what solutions are. A lot of what we see as solutions are just processes. Like somebody would say, let's go to this island with a big machine, collect all the plastic, repurpose it. And I would say, OK, and what's the solution for that solution? Processes and more processes and more processes, leading to entropy, leading to more destruction. On the op opposite end, we have to deal as well with daily contradictions in our lives, like myself. Here I am. I came to give this talk in a jet airplane with a huge environmental impact. I've been uh, studying plastic po pollution for many years, and still I get caught with disposable plastics. I feel horrible about that. I feel really bad. I don't know what to do. So we need to learn to live with the contradictions, or else the opposite, hap the opposite happens. We don't add processes, but we shrink. We, ha we bury our head in the sand. We deny what is happening. So we need to be able to stay there and communicate what we feel. So, but also one important thing that we need is to find some kind of frame, framework to make decisions and to look at our future. We see green businesses, green NGOs, social businesses, social NGOs, all these things happening. But what are they? Um, what is green and what is social? Is, is global warming social or environmental problem? There's 25 million climate refugees right now, a figure that is likely to increase. Is this an environmental issue? When there's toxic chemicals in all of us? Breast cancer, for instance, 90% of breast cancer is environmental. Only 10% is genetic. Fukushima, is that environmental or, so, or social problem? So we are lost. We are stuck in the middle. We have the need for a frame, for a new vocabulary, for new skills, for a way to stepping out of this matrix, like the movie The Matrix, we're, called in this, we're caught in this consumer culture. So I have a proposal from not knowing, from humility, from making the exercise of honesty and integrity of telling you that I don't know. This is my proposal. I think we need to become radical. Radical beings, radical leaders, radical entrepreneurs, radical teachers, radical parents, and what I mean by radical is not what you think. Radical, the word radical is, right now means something extreme and far away from us, something dangerous. But if we look at the origin of this word, radical comes from Latin, the word radis. Radis means the root. And that's what I mean. We need to find a root, what we really want, what being human means. So radical is not the extreme, it's the center, the root. So people talk a lot about planet, people, different things that we want to take care of. But they talk as objects that are out there. Let's take care of the planet. You know? You've seen the picture of some hands holding a planet. I don't think going in that direction is going to work. Because these are not objects. These are relationships. This is who we are. We are interconnected. So, my proposal of radical, of becoming radical, is based on three relationships that I think are broken in all of us and need to be rebuilt. The first relationship is the deep, profound relationship we have with ourselves, which has been broken with our bodies. We are embodied beings with our consciousness. Science cannot explain what it is, but we all have a consciousness. And that relationship gets broken since we're a little child, by consumer culture, by society, by advertising. You're not good enough. You're ugly. 
you're incompetent, et cetera, et cetera. We get educated out of creativity, as we were seeing in the video earlier. So that's the first relationship that is broken, and we need to heal. That's the first piece of our root. The second piece of our root is the deep, profound, intricate relationships that we have with others, with other people around us, people in our family, people in our community, in our neighborhood, in the whole world. And this relationship, too, gets broken by consumer culture. In order to turn humans, human beings, into consumers and producers, you need to break them. You need to tell them that the others are means to attain their goals. You need to tell them that the others are people they should look as competitors or um, to keep up with. Oh, the, new na the neighbor has a new car. I should get a better car, etc. Another relationship that is broken, and maybe if we heal it, we could connect to a root. And then there's the third relationship. That's the relationship with the whole web of life. It's not the earth that we're going to hold. It's the web of life that we are a part of. We are linked to every single being in the planet. So my proposal is if we really connect and heal with these three elements of our root, I'm just wondering what kind of speech will come out of our mouths, which kind of vocabulary which kind of leadership, which kind of organizations, non-profit or for-profit or whatever it is, what kind of financial systems or economies. That is what I've been using as my lens to look at this complexity and this emergence of experiments that we're seeing lately. Again, we have to go to not knowing. It takes a lot of integrity, a lot of courage to say, I don't know, and stay there so that we don't get wrapped up in the process. We need, as well, to be able to deal with our contradictions and the suffering that is coming at us. That looking ourselves in a mirror is not beautiful when you look at the effects that nobody intended. And throughout this process, we should find a lens. And my invitation to all of you is to really connect with who we are before we were transformed into consumers and producers. And maybe, this would, give us, this would give us an opportunity to step into the future, honoring, honoring what it is to be a human being, honoring our, honoring our ancestors, and honoring the generations that are to come. So that's my invitation to join me in this dialogue. I've been talking and writing about this for, for a while, and it's just an experiment that I suspect holds a clue of taking us out of Midway. This picture was take, I was talking of the island of Midway. I think that's a metaphor of where we are. Our society has evolved to a certain point. We know now that we're reaching the limit of growth. We need a new system, but we don't know where to find it or where to go. We're stuck Midway. And we need a, a frame reference, like radical, radical beings to guide us into what to do, because otherwise, we may be doing just like the albatross, picking up from the water things that look great, that look beautiful, shiny, with bright colors. We put them inside of us. We feed them to the chicks. But maybe they don't pack a lot of value. So that's my, my, my invitation to all of you. Get radical. Thank you very much.